Hello, BookTube. I started a new routine today. A new route. Very strange for me. I am so enamored of all my old routines and all my old routes that people have accused me of preferring mourning the death of an old routine to making a new one. <laughs> Just because, I don't know, South Boston Irish Catholic, whatever. Uh, but I decided, a little goading from a few of you, that I needed to, to try to make a new routine. I have a dog who's healthy and happy, and I can leave her for periods of time. And I have a whole bunch of stuff that just isn't happening because I don't have the routines to do it. So I made a new routine today. And only, Bean, cut it out. Uh, only when I was doing the routine did I realize that it walks me right past the Boston Public Library. Uh, my third favorite library in the whole world. <laughs> and, and also a, a new experience. Uh, the Boston Public Library is a sort of a cojoined twins. It's a bifurcated experience. There's an old McKim, Mead, and White building. Gorgeous, gorgeous Beaux-Arts building from 100, 150 years ago that is one part of the library. It's the old library. It faces Copley Square. It faces Trinity Church. It is unbelievable inside and out, and ha it contains Bates Hall, uh, which is one of my favorite places in the entire world. Uh, but the old library has become a research library. You can go and hang out at the tables at Bates Hall, and they have those low green banker's lamps, and they're wonderful. They fill with students during the school season. It's a wonderful place to go and get work done. But the only way you'll use it as a library is as a research library, where you go to the research desk, you let them know what what not the number of your seat in Bates Hall and you put in on slips requests for research material that is not in circulation at the library you have, the research librarians will go and get it they'll bring it to your table and they'll collect it you drop it off when you're done uh, I've used Bates Hall I've used the, the old library for that kind of research many many times over the decades many many times and I've loved it but all the real library services all the living library services went next door a few decades ago, the city decided disastrously that that library needed an expansion. And rather than glom something onto it, they built a building directly next door to it. So close that they actually are conjoined. The Johnson Building. And it was hideous. <laughs> Absolutely hideous. It was Boston brutalism. It looked like a bomb bunker. Low heavy brows, barely any windows, everything arched and and fortified to look like you don't want to get in, and in your, if you're in, you're not going to get out again. It was just a horrible, dingy, dark, uninviting experience. I spent a lot of time in that library, too, because that was the active library. That was where you could go to prowl the shelves for unexpected discoveries, which is what I always used the library for. Uh, but a few years ago, uh, the library got the funds to do a massive rehaul of that building. They didn't do what I suggested, which was to bulldoze it <laughs> and expand the McKim, Mead, and White building with its exact architectural counterpart. They didn't do that. Instead, they decided, no, we'll keep the Johnson building, but we will renovate it as much as a building can be renovated without being torn down. And the result is amazing. My Deb and I went there when when the public was allowed back in. We've been using that library for over a century. We decided surely we should go and get a tour. And we were incredibly impressed by the job that they did. Spaces aren't recognizable to the way they used to be. I'm glad I have so many pictures of the inside of the old Johnson Library because it doesn't look anything like the way it does now. Gigantic amounts of the inside of the building were gutted, ripped out, rearranged. I swear, the architects that did this job the only thing they must have respected were the load-bearing support columns of the building itself. Everything else has been rearranged. Deb and I were blown away, and we really liked it, but she has her own little branch of the Boston Public Library. That was before she decamped from Maine, and so do I. Uh, and the Boston Public Library in Copley Square became, it was immediately written out of any routines or foot roots of mine and never written back in, uh, especially since... I don't go to the library anymore to stay and work. I don't bring a laptop in my bag or a pad of paper and take a seat at one of those tables in Bates Hall and work for a few hours in an afternoon. I don't do that anymore. Uh, that was a lot of fun. It wasn't 
I mean, the one element that wasn't fun was be, I was surrounded by 20 something kids, undergraduates from Boston's very, very many schools, which was great. Uh, aesthetically and otherwise that was great but the uh, the depressing part of it is that all of them were tobacco addicts so regular as clockwork just bing 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 one by one periodically each one would start to reek of an ashtray because their yearning was on them get up ask somebody near them to watch their stuff and go outside to take more of their drug and one, that, that person would no sooner get back than someone else would start to reek and pop up and say could you watch and go outside that sort of Rondelet was a little depressing, but otherwise the experience of working at that table, all surrounded by people working, was wonderful. But I don't do it anymore. So the library sort of fell out of my routine, but I was walking right by it today on my new routine. So I went in thinking, maybe I can use the library. Maybe I can. I, I freely admit that the, you, the booktube videos that I most envy are people doing library halls. I've never understood the attitude in some other parts of booktube that library halls are to be disdained that it all has to be new stuff or it has to be stuff that you buy at the bookstore you know so that you're not only flexing the new books but you are sort of voce flexing your purchasing power i've never really understood that and i've always just my mouth waters when people, someone does a nice big library hall i always want to ask them about their library what is it how far away is it from you how good is it how friendly is it now, the Boston Public Library, uh, the new renovated Johnson Building, is a, a sight to behold physically, uh, but it is not an inviting place for its employees. The employees are almost uniformly rude uh, and sometimes ill-informed. They certainly treat uh, their patrons as though the patrons were unwelcome interruptions in the day. I don't like that. I freely admit I don't like that. I don't like that when I encounter it anywhere. I don't care if you're a city worker. If you're forward-facing to the public, you should be friendly. If you're not friendly, your supervisor should have noticed that and taken you out of a position that is forward-facing to the public, instead of just leaving you the hell there to treat people like they were unwashed cattle. Uh, but I was there to explore, and I figured out what I want to use the library for, and of course, it's reading. I will use the library to check out books and read them. Uh, my first scheme was just to look at the new releases. There's a large amount of new releases. I wanted to sort of get a gauge for how new the new releases would be and whether or not there'd be anything I'd see there that I'd want to either read for the first time, maybe a publisher didn't send it to me, or read for the second time, maybe catch up on it because the publisher never sent me a hardcover or they never sent me a paperback or whatnot. I wanted to see, I don't know the Johnson Library very well, yet my library card had expired. I had to have my library card renewed. <laughs> And once upon a time, if, if, if you had told me that you were going to get in front of an audience and say, I don't know the Johnson building very well, I'd have said, that's nuts. I know it down to the last point of the De Dewey Decimal System. I can take you, I can look at a Dewey Decimal System number for a book and tell you exactly where it is. <laughs> but this new building is completely rearranged. You would never recognize it. So I'm going to explore it, but I'm going to do it in concentric circles and the new releases are right as you walk in the door <laughs> they're, they're a big sprawling area right as you walk in the door so as soon as I got my card renewed I went and browsed the new releases and I want to do a library haul for you I want to show you what I found in the new release section it turns out they're a little all over the map in terms of publication dates but uh, for instance this I never got from the publisher at all this is coming up for air by Tom Daly uh, the Olympic diver who made headlines all throughout the world and all throughout the sports world by coming out as gay. He made a video on YouTube where he came out as gay uh, and is married. He's married to uh, Dustin Lance Black, a great, great screenwriter, a great writer. And this is his memoir uh, about sports, about falling in love with swimming, I assume about falling in love with his husband. And uh, believe me, I, when I borrowed it from the library, I was mindful of what I said yesterday, which is that celebrities don't write their own memoirs. Uh, so I am assuming uh, that Tom Daly had his husband write this, or that his husband, you know, ghost wrote 99.9% .9 of it. I'm assuming that that's true. I mean, if you're sharing a bed, a house, and a baby's room with a great writer, a genuinely talented writer, surely they would be your first person to do. So I'm assuming that this will make very good reading, very pointed, very good reading, but I will get back to you. I have to, that's the one thing I have to figure out about library visits. I'm going to do this every week. Do I make a separate video where I tell you what I thought of the books that were new to me? Seems only fair that I do that. Uh, then this next one uh, came out this year. Uh, but the publisher, who is this? Uh, Yale University Press. 
the Yale University Press and I are usually on very chummy terms. I have reviewed more Yale University Press books than any other person on earth, and I tend to get a lot of what they make, but I never got this. I requested it, then forgot about it, never followed up on it, and never got a copy. This is by Leo Damrosch, who wrote The Club, and also a very good biography of uh, Jonathan Swift. And this is Adventure, his book on uh, Casanova, which is appealing to me because of how much time we will spend in Venice, but also because Casanova led an absolutely fascinating life. And I never got this from the publisher. So I never, so I'm a, I'm a spoiled hothouse flower. <laughs> if I don't get something from a publisher, I don't read it. Uh, so now I can change that. I will fill this in. That is a blank spot that I can fill in. Uh, and then these next two are older. Uh, and they are both, or one of them is a reread. This first one is a reread. I'm going to read it I, again. I only read the advanced copy. I never got a hardcover. Uh, and this is by Jeff Shepard, and it is The Nixon Conspiracy, Watergate, and the Plot to Remove the President, uh, which is about the, you know, the very last days of the Nixon administration and what they were. I did not particularly like this the first time that I read it, uh, but I'm happy to give it another try. Uh, especially since, you know, for all four of these, I mean, these four would not last me more than a weekend. I have a whole, well, technically I have like three weeks <laughs> to read them, but I'm going to, I'll have them all done by next Wednesday when I replicate this routine, <laughs> this new route of mine. And then the last one is something, this is from, uh, who, who brought you up? Uh, William Morrow, the Custom House reprint, or imprint of William Morrow. I never saw it. So it came out last year, but I missed it completely. This is by Michael Gerhardt, and it is Lincoln's Mentors, The Education of a Leader. And there are all of the mentors on the spine. There are all of the, uh, the people, some of the people, that made Lincoln into who he is. And the, the, uh, the uh, dust jacket mentions that, uh, that this is an unconventional book on Lincoln because it doesn't assume that he was a genius and an, an all-seeing savant fully formed, springing from the head of Zeus, that he had to learn things, that he had to have mentors. I really much, I very much like books that take that approach with Lincoln, so, and I missed this. I just plain missed it when it came out, so uh, better late than never. I'm always up for a new Lincoln book if it's intelligently done. So there you go. That is a library haul. I know. <laughs> we have Lincoln's mentors. Uh, we have... Uh, the, the Nixon Conspiracy, about the downfall of Richard Nixon. We have a book on Casanova by Leo Damrosch, who's an author that I really like. Uh, and finally, we have Coming Up for Air, uh, a memoir by the diver Tom Daly that has uh, an inset of color photos, a great many of which uh, naturally, just inevitably, are of naked men, <laughs> naked young men. <laughs> I'm just, I mean, I, I'm happy with the public decision that he made. I'm happy the way that he's embraced himself is, is and, you know, emboldened a fan base. It's, all, it's not often that a major sports figure will come out. Uh, I'm just hoping that 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 he realized, that his, his writer, whoever it is, his husband, realizes in the course of this book that virtually nobody is interested in the details of Olympic diving. <laughs> so I, I know it's the bulk of your life, but it really shouldn't be the bulk of the book. We shall see. I'm going to read these in steady rotation uh, with a deadline of next Wednesday. So I'll read, I'll read probably the bulk of them this weekend. Uh, but that's what I'm planning to do. That is my plan now, is to do a library visit every week. It is part of my new route, which means that next Wednesday I will be going to the Boston Public Library. Will the new release section have new stuff? If it doesn't, will I branch out to some other part of the library, see what random browsing of the shelves will do? You'll be the first to know. <laughs> I will make a video next week and continue this this uh, new routine. Uh, so until then, I will see you soon. Thank you, Booktube.